Welcome everyone and welcome Nancy. It is so wonderful to have you here again today or there as the case may be. And welcome to all of our listeners to our conversations after the sermon as we dig into what was preached on Sunday a little deeper and get a chance to ask questions that frankly it's just hard to ask when you're right in the middle of a worship service. So uh, if you have any questions as you're listening to this today, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll get back to you. It's right here on the screen for you. Critical faith at fpclincoln.org. So I think that's enough introduction today. And uh, Nancy. Hello, Sue. Oh my goodness. It's always fun to have these conversations with you. And for our viewers and our listeners, um, Sue sends me um, a transcript of her sermon. And so then I get to like read it like five times and then like sit with that. And then, then of course I have like a thousand questions, but I'm going to limit the questions to a couple because what I love about your sermon, it was about chaos and kind of the, the necessary um, role kind of chaos plays in our lives. And I shared with this, you, this with you in, in email, Sue, but it reminded me of what I learned in yoga class like years ago. Like the definition of God is G is for generator. O is for operates through us. And D is for destroyer of us. Um, because we're, we're living organisms that are meant to change and grow and evolve and change. So why is chaos so important to us, Sue? Well, when you think about it, I, I love chaos. Uh, chaos theory is something that I've, I've been delving into recently, and it just so resonates. Chaos is where creativity is. Chaos is where growth happens out on the edge. If you think of all of the major advancements and even probably even minor advancements that our, our world and our various cultures have gone through, these changes and growth spurts have happened with great angst and uh, pain in some cases, and frankly, wars in some cases, between those who are trying to preserve the status quo, what they're comfortable with, and those who are saying, we want something more, we want something different. And if you look back through the whole history of the world, again, every major change that's happened and that's moved us forward in this world has happened first on the edges of society and on the edges of culture. And then as it gathered momentum, it began to become more uh, powerful in the culture until the culture could not resist it. And so chaos is where that happens. So I guess if there's no chaos, you're pretty much at status quo. You're pretty much comfortable. And uh, bored. It, yeah. And so <laughs> why change? <laughs> why change? <laughs> so no, chaos, uh, it's necessary for life. You, you can't live yeah without some chaos in your body, in your mind, and in your world, or you stay stuck at the same place. So why do we resist it or are afraid of it or avoid it? I mean, like, like, why do we, what stops us from leaning into it? I think a lot of it is fear because by definition, chaos is unknown. I mean, it's, you, it's not organized. It's not clear. It's not linear. It is, uh, and to, to look at the Genesis story that we started the, the sermon with, the creation story there, chaos is this tohu wavohu. It's this, this uh, in, in Genesis, it's this dark, it says empty void, but there's wind and waves and waters, but it's all in darkness. And so you can't see it. And so chaos, by definition, has this sense of the unknown, and we aren't always comfortable with the unknown. And when we don't know what to expect, we tend to try to go to protect ourselves, to go into a protective mode. So, uh, yeah, so I, I think really that's why we're afraid of it and uncomfortable with it, because we don't know what's on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, it's interesting because Mother Nature often creates chaos. Mm -hmm. Tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, and whatnot. Um, personally, I believe that Mother Nature is going to survive all of us a billion times over, and we're just like um, bothersome children at her at her skirt tail sometimes, and she's like, "Enough of you and all your nonsense." But um, but when you look at things, even at that level, you know, um, in a climate way, it's often like. Um, wildfires, right, are necessary mm -hmm. in the forest to breed yeah. new growth. And so I think, I think sometimes it might be important for us to remember that we're not that much different than what's happening in nature, right? There are these cycles. Yeah, and I think that's a great parallel. Um, for a number of years, i I worked in Kings Canyon National Park in California, uh, home of giant redwoods, the sequoias, and uh, amazing trees. And so many fires have gone through that area. And every time it does, you know, I, I think for a lot of us, our hearts catch for a bit and it's like, oh, those beautiful trees. But the sequoia seed cannot be released from its cone without fire. If there were no fires, there would be no giant sequoias. And so nature is a wonderful example of how chaos is needed to bring forth new life. And if we look at nature as an aspect of God and a creation of God, then we have a God who says chaos is not something to be afraid of. It is full of possibility. It is full of beauty waiting to be born. And so can we shift our understanding and our feelings towards chaos from that of fear to anticipation? Mm -hmm. Anticipation. Yeah, right. Anyone excitement is like, ooh, what's going to come out of this? Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What new possibilities are going to emerge? So, so how can we just kind of um, learn to be okay in chaos. I mean, like, it's like, let the chaos be and like, like swim around in it for a while. How do we, how can we do that? Because we want to like get to the other side so quickly. I want to be on the other side of this. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, to a certain extent, you just have to learn to be okay with being uncomfortable uh, and realizing that you're not going to die if you live in this chaos for a while. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example with our own church here. Our leadership is going through a, a process of, of asking the question, God, where do you want us to go from here? What, what are you, where are you calling us? What are you calling us to? And we have a mix of people and personalities in our leadership, and we have some who want to spend five minutes on that question and say, okay, this is the answer. Let's do it. Let's move forward. And then we have others who are saying, I've, I have no clue where we're going to come out of this, but I need to sit with this chaos for a while and let it become a part of me before I can really get a sense of where I think God is calling us to lead. And so we have those two kinds of people, even here in our own church, those who are comfortable with just being in the chaos and allowing it to be what it will be, and those, it's like, nope, I got to get through this as fast as I can, and and um, let's let's just not be there any longer than we have to. Uh, but there's an interesting thing that happens, at least for me, when I allow myself to just be in that place of chaos and not rush through it. I become more aware. I become more aware of what's around me and what's swirling around me. And I become more aware of what's really important and what isn't. Mm -hmm. I become more aware of what I want to hang on or what I need to hang on to and what I need to let go of. Mm -hmm. So I think if we can tell ourselves it's okay to be uncomfortable and allow ourselves to, in essence, 
revel in that feeling of uncomfortableness, then I think there's some wonderful gifts that can come to us. But we have to make not the emotional decision, but the, the logical decision that says, I'm going to stay in this for a while. Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to see what comes. Mm-hmm. So what, what, but that begs the question, what, what can we do or what role do we play in chaos? Because I'm not so sure all of us can just sit back and observe. Yeah, well, and sometimes we don't have a choice. And so sometimes it's telling our, you know, reminding ourselves or telling ourselves that there's nothing we can do to get through this any faster. So let's, let's take those deep breaths and allow ourselves to just be. And uh, you, you mentioned before we started recording, or no, I think it was after we started recording, uh, what you learned about God in your yoga class. One of the things yoga teaches us is how to breathe. And there's a specific kind of breathing that's done in yoga that actually scientifically has been shown to lower anxiety and lower stress. And so when we are in the chaos, especially when we're finding it hard to just sit there, first thing we need to do is breathe. Just take deep, slow breaths and breathe. And then that actually does put us in a different state of mind. I've been with groups that have done this when they've been in uh, really hectic situations and they come together and everybody's just amped up from whatever was that was going on before. And when you say, "Let's, let's take three deep breaths, you can feel the energy in the room change. And when people are hyperventilating, when people are in a panic mode, if you can help them stop and breathe, it brings them to a different place. So yeah, it may not be easy to just be in the chaos, but I think the very first thing we could do is when it's uncomfortable or or we're antsy is just remind ourselves to breathe and be present. I also think that it helps to find others. You don't have to be in chaos alone. You can be in chaos with a group. Mm -hmm. And as a group, you can draw on each other. You can remind each other that we are strong together. We are not alone. Whatever chaos we're in is is not, you know, we're not going to end up in a grave tomorrow. Um, For most of us, I I recognize that you live in the chaos of, of war. That's a different story. But for most of us, Whatever chaos we're in usually is not going to end up in something utterly tragic. And so sometimes just reminding ourselves to put things in perspective uh, helps. I had a client once years ago. I, I forget even the company I was working for, but they were merging. You know, two companies were merging and I was helping create their employee and customer experience strategy. And. Um, you know, we got the CEO from one company and the CEO from another company and the head of HR, of one company. I mean, you know, and there were barbs flying. This was like a two day workshop. There were there were there were a few barbs flying back and forth. And this one gentleman is the CEO. He was a CEO of one company. And he just every once in a while, he just kind of lobbed this little wisdom bomb. There's just this. Yeah. And so I went up to him afterwards and I just thought, okay, so who are you? Because clearly we all need to learn from you. And, you know, what's your come from place? And he said, well, I am a Marine. And here's the thing. It is always a good day when no one is shooting at you. No one's dying and no one is bleeding. Yes. Everything else is just there. Like, don't worry about it. And it's, I mean, he, this must have been something I learned from him 15 years ago or heard from him. And it's amazing how many times I pull that forward and say, it's okay. No one's dying. No one's bleeding. No one's shooting at us. We got, right. Let's just take it one step at a time. 
what do we need to do? And I love that you just said, sometimes you just reach out to people. Yesterday, I reached out to a couple of my friends because I was shaky. I had a really intense weekend. And, and you know, again, no one's bleeding, no one's dying, no one's shooting at so, but it was a lot. And I get home to my, you know, sweet little, you know, home and I was shaky. And I could tell that my anxiety was revved up and I was probably depleted. You know, I probably didn't drink enough water. I probably didn't, you know, get a good enough sleep. So I needed to do a little bit self self care, but that including me reaching out to two friends. Yeah. And I just said, you don't need, I have no request of you. I just need to share with you that I'm shaky. And here's what's going on. And it helped, it helped, you know, tremendously. I didn't need to fix anything. I just needed, I needed to adjust a belief that I was starting to go into that I'm alone. And I'm like, I'm actually not alone, right? I can reach out. And I reached out to a couple of people that kind of are part of my ongoing saga of life anyway. So less, yeah. less, I didn't have to tell them, you know, they, they didn't need a lot of details to know what was going on. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I agree. Just having that reminder that we're not alone is really important because so often we think we have to face things alone that we can't share our burdens with anybody else. I mean, who, who says, why not? You know, who says we can't do that? So I'm glad you reached out. And I, I think more of us need to, but we live with this American myth that says you, you have to be strong and you have to put on this face that says you have it all under control. And, and the reality is probably for a lot of us, we're, we're living with chaos in our lives and things that are difficult to handle you know, the example of the two companies coming together, I can imagine the anxiety of employees wondering if two companies merge, am I still going to have my job? Yeah. You know, that's, that's a huge thing. And so they're living in this, this darkness, this chaos that, and they don't know what's on the other side. And so I, I think we do need to be careful when people find themselves in chaos to not tell them, you know, hey, it's okay. You're going to make it through this. Everything's going to be perfect and just like it was. Because it may not be. But you will make it through it. And you won't be alone in it. And we don't know what's on the other side. But it may be great. I had a, um, I had a, a job, worst job I'd ever had in my life. I stayed at, I was there five years. I stayed four years, actually, I was there for like five years and two months, and I stayed about five years and one month longer than I should have. Uh, one of those kinds of jobs. Um, left that job midway through the year, uh, made a choice to take a break for about three months and not work. Found a new job, made more money in that year when I did not work three months than I've ever made in any year in my life before then. Ended up with a job that put me on the path that brought me to where I am now. I would not be here now if it weren't for that. And, you know, I think of, of the uncertainty and the fear and the chaos and, you know, the, the not knowing of that time and how bad it was. And I look at where I am now and it's like, gosh, if I'd known then what I know now, I wouldn't have been worried at all. Mm -hmm. But I needed to go through that chaos first. Yeah. Well, and I think our worry comes from everything's going to change and Again, what we are not taught early on is change is life and life is change. Yeah. I was reminded of something and now I have another grandchild who's only, who's only like two months old, cute little thing, cute little bean. And I can even notice that between feedings and naps, she's changing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the thing is we continue that way as living, as, no matter how old we are, I mean, it might be more noticeable in newborns because the they, you know, we they double their weight and size, you know, every three months. But we undergo that same amount of change. We might be not changing how tall we are, or how much we weigh, but we with that still that amount of change is ever present. We're not we're not the same person who went to sleep. That 
yeah. that is the person who wakes up the next morning. And I think we forget that, that we are living, evolving things, mm -hmm. creatures, right? Yes. And life is happening for us, not to us. And a lot of our anxiety and fear and depression and whatnot is, is, is based on hanging on to what we need to let go of that relationship that I, I part of my ego or my identity. This is who I am. This is my job. This is the car I drive. Mm -hmm. This is the relationship I've been. This is whatever. But I think our suffering comes from hanging on and not doing a free fall into the chaos and say, okay, what you got for me? I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. We hang on to something that no longer gives us life and feeds us in the same way it first did. And by hanging on to that, we aren't opening up our hands to receive the next gift mm -hmm. that comes. Uh, and it's, you know, we, we don't want to be uncomfortable. We, we do get afraid. And so it's, I think, a very natural tendency but it's not one that leads to a fulfilling life. You know, you end up spending all your energy holding on to this thing that you really need to let go of. And what kind of a life is that? Just imagine if we were all still, you know, living the life of the thing that we wanted so much when we were in seventh grade, whatever that was, <laughs> you know, a position on the soccer team, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, a, uh, you know, a band concert or whatever. I mean, just imagine if we were all like kind of stuck. And ah. I'm, yeah, it's not where I want to be. <laughs> not good. Oh, so, well, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for leaning into the conversation around chaos. As I say, I love it. <laughs> yeah, as a, it's a generator. It's a regenerator and a generator of possibilities. Exactly. And if we could always remember that whenever we find in a chaotic, ourselves in a chaotic situation and ask ourselves, where's the beauty that's swirling around? Where's the possibility that's swirling around? May very well change our experience of chaos and thus tomorrow. Thank you. This, this has been wonderful. I so appreciate your time. Again, to all of our listeners, if you have any questions or any thoughts you want to share, just email me at criticalfaith at fpclincoln.org. And we look forward to continuing the conversation next week. So again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us at First Presbyterian Church, where faith is nurtured, curiosity encouraged, diversity welcomed, and all are loved. Find out more about us at fpclincoln.org.